The poet sat down beside him, and he and Ernest talked together. Never before had the poet talked with a man like Ernest, so wise and gentle and kind. Ernest, on the other hand, was moved by the living images flung out of the poet's mind. Ernest and the poet are sitting together and talking, and the poet is very much impressed with the wisdom, the gentleness, and the kindness of Ernest. At the same time, we can see that Ernest is also very much impressed with the deeds, the thoughts that are expressed by the poet. As Ernest listened to the poet, he imagined that the great stone face was bending forward to listen too. He gazed into the poet's eyes. Who are you, my gifted guest? He asked. The poet laid his finger on the book that Ernest had been reading. You have read these poems, said he. You know me then, for I wrote them. Now Ernest couldn't stop himself from asking this question to the poet because he was still looking out for the person, the st stone face. And here, that is the reason why he asks a question to the poet. And he says, who are you? The poet expresses himself. Now it is the time he reveals himself that he is the one who had been writing all the poetries that Ernest had been reading. Again and again, Ernest had examined the poet's features. He turned towards the great stone face, then back. He shook his head and sighed. Why are you sad, inquired the poet. Because, replied Ernest, all through life I have awaited the fulfillment of a prophecy. And when I read these poems, I hope that it might be fulfilled in you. You hoped, answered the poet, faintly, smiling, to find in me the likeness of the great stone face. I am not worthy to be its likeness. And so now, when they are talking, you can see Ernest is looking at his face, the poet's face, and the stone face. And so, he cannot find much resemblance or he cannot come to the conclusion whether the poet is the same person. And so he sighs. And then the poet asks him, why, what happened, why are you sad? And so Ernest reveals that he had been waiting for the prophecy to come true. And listening to that, the poet humbly says, no, not at all. I am not the person, I am not the person with the stone face. And why not? asked Ernest. He pointed to the book. Are you not those thoughts worthy? And so the thoughts that are expressed by the poet are so excellent that Ernest still feels maybe the poet is the one with the prophecy coming true. You can hear in them the distant voice of a heavenly song. But my life, dear Ernest, has not corresponded with my thoughts. I have had grand dreams, but they have been only dreams. Sometimes I lack faith in my own thoughts. Why then, pure seeker of the good and true, should you hope to find me in the face of the mountain? And so, the poet here says, not at all, I can't be the person. Why? The reason is, maybe my thoughts that I have expressed are so very good. Maybe you are liking the thoughts, but the problem with it is, I am and I was unable to live my life according to the thoughts that I have expressed. So I cannot be the one. The poet spoke sadly and his eyes were wet with tears. So too were those of Ernest. At the hour of sunset, as hand had long been his custom, Ernest was to speak to a group of neighbors in the open air. Together, he and the poet went to the meeting place, arm in arm. From there could he seen the great stone face. Now it was time for Ernest to address to a group of people his usual habit or every day that he did, he went to a particular place from where the stone face was very clear to him. At the same time, he used to speak to the people. Ernest threw a look of a familiar kindness around upon his audience. He began to speak to the people what was in his heart and mind. His words had power because they agreed with his thoughts and his thoughts had reality and depth, because they harmonized with the life which he had always lived. It was not mere breath that the preacher uttered. They were the words of life. A life of good deeds and selfless love was melted into them. 
the poet as he listened felt that the life and character of ernest were a nobler strain of poetry than he had ever written his eyes filled with tears and he said to himself that never was there so worthy a sage as that mild sweet thoughtful face with the glory of white hair diffuse about now here we can see the meaning of harmonize is given to us that is corresponded with agreed with sage wise man now these people are sitting over there ernest started speaking to the people who are sitting and the way he spoke impressed the poet very much and he came to know why people had come from far off to listen to him because what he spoke was what he lived and what he lived was really beautiful life a life which was very much true and this man when he was listening his eyes filled with tears and here you can see that he tells to his own self he had never ever seen a sage means a wise man such as ernest at a distance but clearly to be seen high up in the golden light of the setting sun appeared the great stone face with white mist around it like the white hair around the brow of ernest at that moment ernest's face took on an expression so grand that the poet was moved to throw his arms up and shout behold behold ernest is himself the likeness of the great stone face now you can see ernest had been addressing the group of people at sunset and as the sun was going down here you can see mist came up over the stone face and it covered the stone face in such a way as though it looked like white hair and the face seemed to be same as ernest or the face of ernest and looking at that the poet was very much excited happy and he couldn't stop himself from shouting behold behold ernest himself is the likeness of the great stone face then all the people looked and saw that what the poet said was true the prophecy was fulfilled but ernest having finished what he had to say took the poet's arm and walked slowly homeward still hoping that some wiser and better man than himself would by and by appear bearing a resemblance to the great stone face now when the poet shouted and tried to get the attention of all the people the people sitting over there they also realized that yes really ernest is the person the prophecy coming true but here you can see ernest being so very humble never expresses self he never tries to show that yes really it was he but instead he walks back home thinking to his own self maybe one day a person really worthy of the great stone face will appear so students here we finish this part of this lesson thank you